Welcome pilot to the basics of operation of the standard navigation console, part of every ship in the solar system. Let's get started with the map controls and we will make sure that we understand the navigation mode when we're docked should always remain in map controls as to not cause accidental damage or death. Once we're in space we are safe to operate RCS maneuvers as displayed in our map as well if we pay attention to that. Map controls include a time advance that allows us to see where planets, ships, salvage or other objects are going to be at what point of time, including the reset button to just go live. We have multiple zoom stages. We start with station at around 65 kilometers. We have ATC at about 740 kilometers. The planet view that encompasses about 915,000 kilometers. A inner planet view that is just over 3 astronomical units. And an outer planet view that is just over 51 astronomical units. We have a no wake zone button that allows us to enable or disable the wake zone display. Wake zone of course is the safety zone around all stations and important objects to prevent the fusion particle plume from damaging life. We have a tracking mode selector and with the left and right mouse button we can turn it off. We can go to ship, we go back to station mode or we can select a target and go into target tracking mode which can be useful in many situations. We will go back to the ship. Ship labels can be turned off in case we need a bit more visibility. We can select call signs only, name only or a combination of both alternating in a couple seconds. Focus can be switched to Barry Focus, which is the gravity well of currently point of reference of the Sun. We also note that we are currently traveling in reference to the Sun at 25 kilometers per second and we are ranged at 1.85 AU. Why this is important? Because we need to understand what our map indicator means. Meaning, when we continue with the time here and we put a marker on the map, Realize that the marker is moving. It is not the marker moving, it is us moving. And because our map, as well as the tracking mode, is part of our ship, the marker is actually part of the universe. The marker is traveling at the speed at which we orbit the sun, which is 25 kilometers a second. So we are stationary in reference to this target, but the marker is stationary in reference to the sun. And we are moving around the marker. Just on a side note, we have the warning indicators that consist of a transponder fault, the antenna fault, a track warning, as well as the proximity warning. If your transponder is faulty, then that will illuminate, can be cancelled with clear. If your antenna has been damaged or is missing, can be cleared with that button as well. We have a tracking warning that could come online once you're being tracked by either pirate or law enforcement, which usually results in boarding thereafter. The proximity warning can be muted, but I do recommend not do that in case of you forgetting about that information and um, you get close to something not realizing and you crash and burn and that is not good. What I recommend you do instead if, if the alarm comes on and you're aware of what you're doing, just hit clear and the uh, warning will be cancelled. Then we have a dock system clamp indicator, once we're docked that will illuminate. Transponder IFF, as long as your transponder is on and functioning, it will display your ship's details. The flight dynamics monitor comes online when we are entering an atmosphere. It will display gravity when there is enough gravity measured around a planetoid. Diagnostics ship logs will indicate you the pins set on doors and containers within the ship. Print status just gives us additional information of your ship including the weight and contents of containers. The rescue function, we have to unbolt the panel and below we can find a drop down box which allows us to select multiple targets and instantly dock in case of emergency of course. Ship controls as well as map controls are on this bottom segment here. Station keeping. The maneuver drive allows us to select between RCS and therefore space operations and rotor operations in the atmosphere. Note that rotors and RCS may have different throttle values, so be aware 
off the settings of that. I recommend you switch to rotors when rotor efficiency is displayed just to save you the nitrogen because rotors are of course operated by battery power or in our case nearly infinite power reserve through the reactor. On the far left we have our long range course plot. A lot of pilots have gotten themselves killed not utilizing this tool properly. But basically we can select the tolerable max acceleration limit as well as the drift phase so the time that it takes from accelerating to drifting to slowing down and then of course we can plot that course. Of course we have to select a target outside of 5000 kilometers. So let us do that. We will select inner planets. We will select say the uh, port Shejiang. We can go to ATC. We will plot the course and we will of course notice that our plotted course does go through the wake zone. So be aware if you start a course and you're outside of the wake zone and your course goes through the wake zone the course engagement will function outside of the wake zone but if it takes you through the wake zone it will cancel the course and the reactor. If you have accelerated too much then your ship might be out of control. So always make sure you plot the course outside of the wake zone and do not interfere with any of those objects. The torch drive enables us to take manual control of our reactor. We can always increase or decrease the flow even within the wake zone. Note that the core temperature will go up. Let me accelerate that by removing the safety. If we increase the flow too much, we will get into the yellow and red and um, as you may or may not know, we have a ablative armor inside of the reactor that through overheating will damage, get damaged and uh, when that is damaged and gone, your reactor will explode and kill you instantly. The cycle control is of course the arbitrary control for the reactor to release the particles that allow us to accelerate the ship. Note that the operation of the reactor is solely forward. There is no reactive control in the generator. It is a torch drive that is on the back of the ship and um, you have to turn the ship around if you want to use the torch drive to decelerate. The safety control is of course a recommended setting that if you use the reactor only for short time or in close proximity of other objects to change the minimum and maximum value of your throttle and it prevents you from getting too fast. Too fast, too fast. Yeah. Thrust cycle, of course, only becomes available outside of the wake zone. It will flash and indicate that you're within the wake zone and therefore prohibit you from firing up the or opening the aperture of the uh, reactor. Then we have a emergency shutdown that, of course, kills our reactor instantaneously and safely shuts it down. Yes, good question. Of course, the uh, fuel indicator. Let us cover that as well. The RCF fuel is displayed in three different values. We have a quick information display in shape of this bar. We have a display in percent and weight. And we have the display in delta V. Delta V, of course, is indicating that this is the speed we can accelerate up to with our current RCS fuel. So if we were traveling at 6 kilometers a second, then thinking ahead in time, there is no way to get to it, number one. But second of all, there is no way to slow down from 6 kilo kilometers per second. Chances are at that speed you have moved through the wake zone and you can use your reactor if you have it. But yes, keep an eye on your fuel and estimate whether or not you have sufficient to slow down.